I'm Veronica with Whole Earth Harvest, and today we're going to be talking about fall mushrooms and mushrooms that uh, we grow and we sell, and they're available in the fall time here at Whole Earth Harvest um, and in Oregon. And um, a lot of these uh, mushrooms too are available um, at other areas in the Northwest, or they grow other areas in the Northwest, so um, and even around the country. So, um, but here's here's uh, what's mostly available in our area. Um, chanterelles are the most popular ones. They um, are great, they're very popular. I call them the queen of mushrooms um, because um, the king of mushrooms I call my, um, morel because those are very, very popular in the spring. But anyway, this is fall. They have a wonderful kind of um, delightful, sweet taste to it. Um, they're very good. Um, this is a chanterelle. This is lobster, cauliflower, chicken of the woods. And what's not what we don't have here is matsutake and um, porcini. So um, I'm going to just touch bases on each thing. Um, really, a lot of these things, people say, how do you cook them? Um, butter and garlic is one of the simplest things that you can do that work very well. Um, I'll just kind of give you just some tidbits um, of what I like to do with, with each item um, real quickly. And then, of course, you can um, Google it on, online and um, find some of your own recipes as well. Um, but my favorite recipe with, with almost all of these um, is butter, wine, garlic, sweet basil, curry, and pepper. I cook that up at the farmer's market all the time. Um, so it's, it's great for the, the chanterelle. Um, the chanterelle is also good in soups. I also like to use them for um, um, gravies around this time of year, Thanksgiving um, gravy sauce. Um, I use the chanterelle and um, a couple other mushrooms that we, we carry too. But this is definitely one of, one of my choices. Um, I eat them a lot um, when I go out, at, out and eat at restaurants. Um, when they have a chanterelle pizza, a lot of times I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm ordering a chanterelle pizza. So um, anyway, many things you can do with it. Um, OK, moving on to the next major mushroom that grows around here this time of year is a lobster. A lobster mushroom, as its name, it kind of has that colorful lobster look to it, but it also has a lobster smell to it. And I like to let people know I'm not a big seafood eater, so if you don't like seafood that much, um, you still don't need to be afraid of the lobster because it's, um, it's similar, but it's not that overwhelming seafood um, um, flavor. Uh, it's still very enjoyable. And I would say probably one of the best um, recipes I enjoy this in would be like a cheese lobster omelet. Um, it seems to um, because of the smell and the, how it's, con, you know, con, it's very uh, thick, you need to cook it through slowly. But it, it's just great in eggs, that eggs and cheese, the cream, um, is really great. Um, and of course, it really cooks up good with, with seafood, too. If you do like seafood, um, it's a good mushroom to add to your seafood dishes. Um, so these are the most common ones. When you go out mushroom picking, a lot of times people pick up chanterelle or lobster, and along the way, many times, they'll find the cauliflower and the chicken of the woods. That's how it works for me. I'll be out picking these, and then I'll look at the bottom of a, of a tree, and then I'll see a big, um, you know, sometimes, you know, five, six, seven, eight pounds cauliflower um, at the bottom of the tree. It's really fun to see that. So this right here is, I don't know, maybe about a pound or so. Um, so what, what it is, it's kind of reminds me of a noodle, um, kind of like an egg noodle. Um, it has like an earthy smell. It doesn't taste really like an egg noodle that much, but it does kind of have um, that light sort of, um, you know, I don't know, texture to it. Um, but, but when you smell it, you go out in the woods and you smell this, you know, the fresh air that the wood has. And when you smell this, you still get that feel, that kind of the fresh air, the kind of the woody sort of feel to it. So it definitely has a nice taste. Good in soups. Anything you might even put, at least this is what I do to it. Like um, if you want to use egg noodle, you kind of think in those terms like um, a recipe I saw was like a chicken pot pie where you might put some noodles in a, you know, a pot pie. Um, you know, instead of noodles, you could put cauliflower mushroom. Um, so soups. Um, okay, so chicken of the woods, they're so much fun. Um, so uh, unlike cauliflower you see on the bottom of the tree, the chicken of the woods you see staggering on a tree. Um, the, there's other fungi that you see kind of staggering on a tree too. So the chicken of the woods are the ones you can like just easily break off. 
Um, the other fungi, which I run into a lot, I always hope, I think, oh, look at there's chicken in the woods, and then it's really hard, and it, I realize that's not chicken in the woods. I have heard that that's another kind, um, turkey tail, I think it is, um, but that's something you might want to look into. Um, so, um, because supposedly it's supposed to be pretty good for you, but, but I'll let you look into that. Um, uh, because you do have to be careful when you're picking mushrooms. There might be, you know, mushrooms that look like they're edible, and of course, not all mushrooms are edible. Um, so look into that. But the chicken of the woods tastes like chicken. I tell a story about um, when my kids were younger, and I had a couple of turkey breasts, but I was trying to make a chicken dinner, and I went out to the, the, the barn and grabbed some chicken of the woods and diced it all up and mixed it in with my chicken, and everybody thought they were eating chicken. So it's pretty amazing. It has the same texture um, as chicken when it's cooked through. Just be patient, um, as with uh, lobster. It um, takes a little while for it to cook through. Um, you know, um, some of these are maybe more quicker. Um, so, um, but if, yeah, if you do it right, you'll really think it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty awesome. Okay, so the, the timing where these grow, and I'm gonna take my notes here because um, I know when I pick them, but sometimes there's a different growing cycle, maybe just in other areas of Oregon, and we do offer them as, as long as we can get them. Um, so the chanterelles um, sometimes can grow as early as July um, or August. I get them between September, November, sometimes December if it's a, a warm uh, winter. Lobster, pretty much the same thing. Um, well, through October, it's, the season ends sooner. So it's, it's just about out of season right now as we're in, coming into um, early uh, November. Um, chicken of the Woods and Cauliflower. Um, these are the ones that I, um, you know, again, run into September through November, somewhere around there. And uh, Matsutake and Percini, we don't have those right now. I think Matsutake might still be growing. The Percini, we haven't had them in a couple weeks. That's not to say that somebody's not going to bring them in because sometimes we think things are out of season and somebody will find them somewhere else and then they're in season again. So that's um, um, September through October, usually for, for both of them. Um, so. The good news is, is if they're not in season, you can get almost anything in season um, or out of season because we have dried mushrooms, um, dried lobster, porcini, very, very popular, very good. Porcini is uh, really delicious. So even though it's no, not in season now, um, it's, it, it is on the top of the list of one of my favorite mushrooms as well. Uh, black uh, trumpet mushroom, anyway, morel and um, we have a lot more too. Um, so, um, and the nice thing about having dried mushrooms is if you have your favorite mushroom, it's very expensive to ship mushrooms overnight. And that's important that we, that we do that because otherwise the mushrooms, you know, will go bad. They don't stay, um, you know, in the, in the mail very long for, for two days, you know, they'll start going bad. So anyway, um, um, so if, if you do want to order fresh mushrooms, I would recommend getting them in a bigger um, box and then figuring out how you can, you know, when they get at home, you know, what you might need to freeze because you can um, usually find a way to freeze mushrooms. Um, and um, if cost is a factor, consider dried mushrooms. Now, another thing people ask me, well, what, um, you know, what's your favorite mushrooms? And I always, um, like to say that I like chanterelles a lot and uh, shiitake and maitake. And this is something that we cultivate here on the farm. It's available year round. This is shiitake mushroom. Um, this right here is our mushroom block, which by the way, we do sell these gift baskets too. They're very popular. So these are the shiitake mushroom block um, that are available um, where you can grow your own that, that will look um, similar to that. And then we have shiitake mushroom. Um, cultivated. And, and then we have my talkie mushroom. So I would say, you know, around when I'm making a um, turkey uh, gravy for Thanksgiving, um, what I usually grab is I'll grab the shiitake, my talkie, and chanterelle. Great choices on mushroom. But um, I gave you some information um, that should get you started if you're looking for some mushrooms and want more information about what you can get fresh in the fall. Thank you.